The last kind of control of the flow of your program that we're going to look at is error trapping. Sometimes when code is executing, something happens that is a problem um, and, or an error. Uh, an error is called an exception. So what error trapping does is handles the problems that come up gracefully instead of just crashing the script. So the way that we uh, set this up is very similar to the if else statement. So first we have a try clause and a colon. Then we have an indented code block <clears throat> where we put the code in that might throw an error. So if the code gets executed and nothing bad happens, then it will go down and continue executing the code outside of the next indented code block. But if in the process of trying to execute this code, some kind of bad thing happens, then it jumps over to the accept clause and it will execute the indented code block that comes after the accept clause. So this is similar in that the code blocks are indented and that we have to have colons after try and accept. So let's look at, an, at a common example here. One of the things that we knew from earlier examples was that when we type something in with the input function, it always comes in as a string. And so if we want to perform some kind of mathematical operation on what we typed in, we have to turn it from a string into either an integer or floating point number using a function like float. The problem is that if the person types in some characters that, are, that will not be able to be converted into a valid floating point number, then the program is going to throw an error. It's going to say, hey, I don't know what to do because you typed in something that wasn't a number. So what we want to do in that case is to gracefully handle this. Instead of having the program crash, we want it to say, sorry, you didn't enter a number. On the other hand, if the, uh, no, the characters they typed in can successfully be turned into a floating point number, then we're going to change it into, we're, we're going to assign it to the variable diameter, and then we will print out the circumference is, and then print their diameter times pi. The reason why this print statement needs to go inside the try clause is because we don't want the, the computer to try to print out what the circumference is if the person was not successful in typing something in. If we did that, then diameter wouldn't have any value and it would say the circumference is zero, which doesn't make any sense. So we want, so even though the print statement is not a place where we would potentially have an error occurring, we still want it to be inside the try um, indented code block because we want to prevent it from being uh, executed uh, except in the case when the attempt is successful. So it's it's basically a good idea to have a try and accept clause anytime in your program when there might be an error and we'll look at a couple examples of this. So here we have the example uh, that we saw on the PowerPoint slide. We're going to import pi because our job is to calculate the diameter of a, cir of a circle. So the person will type in a diameter, we'll try to turn it into a floating point number and print the circumference. So if I do this and I type in a number like five, everything is good. On the other hand, if I run the code and I type in something like x, y, z, then the program crashes. And it says here, warning, cannot convert string to float. And it's telling me that the problem was that I typed in x, y, and z. So this sort of error and crashing is something we want to try to avoid our programs from doing. So here I have placed the conversion step inside a try clause. So if we try running this script, we type in five, it works just like the script did before, but now if we run it again and we type in X, Y, Z, then instead of crashing and having this error message up here, we can say very politely, sorry, you did not enter a number. Another kind of situation where we could have an error 
is in the case where we have a dictionary and we specify a key that is not part of that dictionary. So let's, in this particular dictionary here, there are four valid catalog numbers, but if we type in one that's not a valid catalog number and we try to call it, reference it by an, a key that doesn't exist, it will throw an error. So let's go ahead and try that. If we put in 992, then it says you have ordered a Poyute. Uh, if we say um, 123, then the program crashes. It says key error 123. That's because our dictionary does not have any key that is the one we typed in, 123. We can fix this problem by putting the print statement into a try clause. So it'll try to print the part number uh, index that we put in. And if it works, we'll see the, the answer. But if it doesn't work, then it's going to say, sorry, that uh, part isn't available. In order to be polite, we will have this line here that says, it's a pleasure doing business with you. That line will always be executed whether there, it's successful at finding the part number or whether it says the part isn't available. So let's try that. Let's get a smoke shifter. That's always a useful thing to have. You have ordered a smoke shifter. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Let's try running the program again, but this time let's put in an invalid catalog number. Now it's thrown an error, but instead of crashing the program, it's transferred control of the program to the accept clause and it politely says that part isn't available. And then it does the same thing it does every time, which is to say, it's been a pleasure doing business with you.